Today on People Now, a tragic shooting in a Florida high school as a former student opens fire, leaving 17 dead. We have details. As women, you know, we're always taught, in my opinion, to be ashamed of our bodies, and everyone's always telling us it's better to cover up. Olympian Allie Raisman opens up about backlash from her Sports Illustrated swimsuit photos. Black Panther roars into theaters this weekend, and one of the stars revealing how some of the cast stayed ripped on set. A feast fit for some Kardashians. We are loving Kris Jenner's lavish Valentine's dinner. Plus, all we gotta do is keep it. Country star Tegan Marie is keeping it lit with her newest single and telling us why she admires Kelsey Ballerini. It is all today on People Now. Happy Thursday, everyone. We are counting down, at least us superhero fans, are counting down the release of uh, Marvel's Black Panther. It is out tomorrow. Very excited. Let's just say everyone's excited for this at this point. Now, later on the show, I'm talking to Winston Duke, one of the breakout stars from the movie. In honor of that, we're asking you who your favorite superhero is. You can tweet us at people using the hashtag people now. But first, we begin with this very sad story today. Another school shooting has stunned the country, this time in Parkland, Florida. At least 17 adults and children were killed on Wednesday, including the school's beloved assistant football coach, Aaron Fees. The school football team's Twitter account posting this tribute to Fees on Thursday, saying in part, quote, he selflessly shielded students from the shooter when he was shot. He died a hero and will forever be in our hearts and memories. Fees graduated from Stoneman Douglas High School in 1999 and worked at the school for his entire coaching career. He was transported to a local hospital after the shooting where he was rushed into surgery and later succumbed to his injuries. The Florida Sheriff's Office leading the investigation into the shooting has revealed that the alleged gunman tried to flee by hiding himself among terrified students exiting the building. The 19 year old was a former student of Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School who was expelled for disciplinary reasons. Investigators had to comb through security footage to identify him, leading to his arrest in a nearby neighborhood of Coral Springs. One teacher who was overseeing students working on the school newspaper at the time of the shooting describes what those initial moments of panic were like. Um, the fire alarm went off, so we just, you know, followed the protocol, you know, which is we're supposed to, when the fire alarm goes off, we have to, you know, evacuate. So, um, you know, we make it out, you know, of my room and out of the hallway, and we're starting to go down the stairs, and the security guard who's posted in our area said, no, it's a code red, um, you know, go back. And so, you know, the teachers who were there called out to the kids, and we started going back to the classroom and, you know, taking in, in kids and yelling to kids in the hallway to get inside. Well, obviously really crucial that teachers stay calm and collected when these things happen. They're so impressive that they're able to pull that off. And meanwhile, one student describes the atmosphere during such an unthinkable event. In Valentine's Day, everyone was happy, spreading love, and it just crashed down so quick. And Park Parkland is a suburb of Fort Lauderdale with a population of about 30,000 people. The mayor of the close-knit town, Christine Hunshovsky, is sharing her thoughts on the shooting and calling out those in positions of power to make a change. If we've learned nothing else, we've learned that this can happen anywhere and that we cannot be complacent. We need to pay attention to what's going on around us. And um, I'm hoping at some point that we'll see some courage in leadership, in our legislative leadership, and people will roll up their sleeves and do the hard work to find out what the answers are to these problems. This shooting in, uh, is the United States' 18th school-related shooting this year alone. So she is definitely not the only one hoping that real change comes out of this. And of course, our thoughts and prayers going out to all the teachers, students, loved ones affected by this tragedy. So heartbreaking. Uh, but guys, we shift gears now from this tragic story to something a bit more hopeful. She is a golden girl. Star racer Michaela Schifrin snagged that gold in the women's alpine skiing giant slalom at the Winter Games in Pyeongchang. Schifrin finally made her game's debut following multiple weather-related delays, but the wait was obviously worth it. Out of the gate, the super skier put down a solid first run, putting her in second place behind Italy. So Schifrin kicked it up a notch for her second run hours later and blew the course away. And guys, she has only just begun. The athlete will race in three more events, starting with slalom, uh, her signature race. That's on Friday morning. We know Twitter has been loving these winter games. Aaron using the perfect Austin Powers gif, saying add another gold to the USA counts. Uh, and another user pointing out that Schifrin loves her naps and maybe they could be the reason behind her success. We just don't know.
but we're eating popcorn as we watch. Uh, the U.S. Ski and Snowboard team pointed out the sweet moment Schifrin's dad reacted to her gold medal win. Guys, we hope that she goes for the gold, and Michaela, good luck as you go for the rest of those golds. Now watch. I actually had somebody say something to me a couple months ago saying, I don't understand how you can complain that you were um, molested because you participated in Sports Illustrated Swimsuit. And I'm like, it just, it, do, it doesn't matter. You know, there, it doesn't, I just don't understand. And it really makes me, um, it's devastating. Like, I can't even tell you how many people have told me that when they were raped, um, they were asked, well, what were you wearing? Doesn't matter, right. it doesn't matter what you're wearing. It's never, ever okay. Allie Raisman is challenging the backlash over her nude SI Swim photo shoot. The new franchise titled In Her Own Words features Raisman bearing it all for the camera with powerful words like fierce and survivor etched across her body. The Olympian has made it her mission to stop the cycle of abuse, explaining how shaming women's sexuality is part of the problem. As women, you know, we're always taught, in my opinion, to be ashamed of our bodies and everyone's always telling us it's better to cover up. I know women do not have to be modest to be respected. You can be sexy, you can be wearing a sexy bikini, you can still be smart, um, powerful, have a voice, you can still be advocating for change, you can still be a good person, you can still be respected. Um, and I don't know why some people think that if a woman is sexy and wearing a sexy outfit, that it's okay to abuse her. You should be able to walk down the street late at night in an alleyway by yourself, wearing whatever you want and to not have any risk of being attacked. Uh, well said, and with the uh, 2018 Winter Games currently underway, is Raisman watching? Well, the six-time medalist whose powerful testimony against Larry Nasser rocked USA Gymnastics says that she's tried not to let her painful experiences affect her view of the games, but that she will always continue to speak out for what is right. Right now, um, the Winter Olympics is going on, and, and um, I separate my thoughts on the how I am disappointed in the U.S. Olympic Committee, and I support all the athletes I've been watching, I've been cheering them on, and I'm proud of, of everything they've done so far. Um, but I, I don't get nervous anymore. Of course, it's really scary to speak out, and when I first started speaking out, it was really scary, um, but I know it's the right thing to do, and I think the right thing to do is always really important. I don't think the United States Olympic Committee, USA Gymnastics, and Michigan State University are doing the right thing. They haven't done it at all, and they continue to not take accountability, and so Larry Nassar didn't even have his medical license in Texas where he treated us, or treated us at uh, the Carilli Ranch in Texas, and um, that just shows, like, organizations, um, have to do a better job. Everyone has to do a better job. This is a lot more common than we ever thought and everyone has to be talking about it. And I think if you're not pissed off and scared and devastated, then you're not paying attention. Man, so great to hear from her. We were both saying it feels like she has really found her voice and she knows exactly what she needs to do right now. She's doing it. And she is focused. I mean, we've seen she's been doing so much the last couple months, yeah. but she has this platform and she's using it to help others. And it was very inspiring yeah. to talk to her and sit down and talk about these things. Yeah, it really was. All right, you guys, let's check in on our question of the day. In honor of the highly anticipated Black Panther out tomorrow, we're asking you who your favorite superhero is. One Twitter user saying, I'm a Hulk fan. I can also get down <laughs> with some Spider-Man. You can all get down with some Spider-Man. <laughs> I am a fan of Wonder Woman. That's uh, mine. That's okay. my choice. Yeah, and especially this latest movie. Yeah. Uh, everyone's stoked, though, about Black Panther's big release. Check this out. Saying, y'all, by this time tomorrow, I will have seen Black Panther. It feels like the night before my birthday, Christmas, and graduation. <laughs> all away. at the same time. So many people excited. Even our, we were talking in, in makeup. Our makeup artists are going to see it. Mm -hmm. One of them tonight and someone else over the weekend. Um, I can't wait for a reaction to this. I saw it like a week ago. Humble brag. Drop I know, out. right? Okay, uh, but no, nice. it, it's so great. And uh, I'm just really excited to be able to talk to people about it and see what people thought. And you, I'm you, going to, you going to see? I'm gonna, no, I'm going to see it. I haven't weekend. seen it yet. Yeah. I'm going to see it this weekend. Okay, good. I'm sure I'm going to love it. And you even have more trending news for us in Star Trek. Jeremy, would you look at that? Things are getting hot. <laughs> we are kicking off Star Trek with one red hot celeb. So most people just wear red clothes for Valentine's Day, but Julianne Huff kicked it up a notch and transformed into a fiery redhead. Look at these pictures. She shared some snaps of her freshly dyed locks on Instagram on Wednesday. I gotta say, she looks like a totally new person, but even though she may look brand new, 
Jules says she's never felt more like herself than she does now with red hair. Now, Julianne is, of course, known for her signature blonde locks, but she says, quote, I've always felt like a redhead my whole life, revealing in her caption that the hair color switch up has been in the works for over six years and that she's never felt more feminine and alive. And I am loving the red hair. Jeremy, do you like this yeah, hair? Yeah, it looks good. She I think it brings great. out her eyes. I'm a huge fan. Yeah. Looking great, Jules. It's subtle, it's nice. Yeah. Well, speaking of red hot ladies, Kris Jenner hosted an elaborate Valentine's Day dinner at her Calabasas home to honor the day of love. The momager celebrated with her own Valentine, Corey Gamble, and kids Kim, Chloe, and Rob Kardashian. But that's not all. Family friends Jada Pinkett Smith and Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star Kyle Richards also joined in on the fun. And the Kardashian sisters made sure they brought their Valentines, Kanye West and Tristan Thompson, along for the dinner party as well. Look at them. Chris dazzled with red roses throughout the tablescape, but Kim was especially impressed by her mom's resourcefulness. Kris Jenner used chocolate chunks as place cards, but after taking a closer look, Kim noticed the chocolates were the promotional ones that she sent along during her latest perfume release. She gushed about it on her Insta, saying, quote, how cute is my mom? The answer, very cute. <laughs> and pregnant Chloe shared a cute smooch with her baller boyfriend, who sent everyone a happy Valentine's Day shout out on her Insta stories. Kim made sure to get a video for her Insta, featuring her mom, Chris, and a very fierce looking Jada Pinkett Smith. And while she was at it, Kim also got a vintage looking snap in of her and hubby Kanye, ambushing a very off guard Rob Kardashian. Not cool to ambush Kim. <laughs> well, to round the night off, everyone sang Kanye West's 2010 song, Runaway, at the dinner table, and continued the party by busting out the karaoke machine. That sounds like a fun time. Karaoke machine at the end? Those are your Star Tracks for today. I always want to know how many people they have on staff that like set up those dinners. They're so elaborate. They're very elaborate. You know? I'm still caught up on the karaoke and just yeah. wondering if Kanye was singing along. I know. Okay. He was. He was. So? All right. In case you missed it, the 2018 Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue is out now. The special edition features rookies, athletes, activists, superstars like Ashley Graham. Yep. I hosted the SI Swim launch party live show last night. Ashley and her husband, Justin Irvin, were there for all the fun. They were great. Even <laughs> spilling a few secrets on how they keep the romance alive. Watch this. There's something we do is we play, it's called the nice game, right? So You know that whether... feeling after you have a fight and you still have that like tension? Yeah. This is how we get rid of it. So I have to tell her to say something nice. Mm -hmm. Well, and one of us starts. Versa. And it's one or the other says, say something nice. And so the other one has to say something nice. It can't yeah. be a physical, because that's just obvious. just post-argument. Yes. Which, by the way, when you, the, so the first person to say it, it's like, oh, yeah. exactly. And then exactly the other that. one has to go right away. And literally what it does is it just takes you down. It calms you down from that fight, and you just go right back in to r real life. Yeah, 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 it helps put the argument or whatever the tip is in the past and focus on each other again. Okay, we've interviewed Ashley Graham a few times. She has her vision board and everything. This does not surprise me at all. No, the her nice game. Her strategic approach to this. Yeah, I it's love so it. smart, though. All right, of course, we have to talk about this year's cover girl, Danielle Herring. Yeah, Danielle, is, she is absolutely killing the game these days. This is only her second year in SI, and poof, she's on the cover. <laughs> I sat down with Danielle, and her parents were there celebrating, Amazing. too. Mom and dad with their own advice for their daughter now that she's this big rising star. Just be yourself. Um, if that's who she is she's gonna shine because she's genuinely happy she's giving loving and she loves to share with people so that's just who Danielle is uh, just be down to earth genuine uh, and as far as parents just support your child support your kids whatever whatever their dream is because you never know that's adorable that they were there and so proud of her. I have to know, Jeremy, what did Papa Harrington really think about his daughter's uh, sexy photo shoot? Because the photos are pretty hot and Yeah, heavy. they could definitely be Can't be hot easy for a dad. I, I think he has a pretty good perspective, though, when it comes to the whole modeling world. Watch this. I was fine with it, you okay. know, but yeah. as it, you know, kept going, I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, but now that it's get to this point, it, it's all worth it. I mean, yeah. I'm behind it 100%. I love it. They seem yeah. very supportive. And that's uh, Chase Carter there, my co-host as oh, well. Yeah. She asked that question. She's like, when my dad sees these pictures, I'm like, uh. So yeah. it, was, it was really funny to kind of get his I, I like it. Um, former Miss Universe Olivia Culpo also graces this year's issue. But modeling isn't the only thing that is keeping her busy. Yeah, right, Jeremy? she's very busy. Olivia is going to be appearing in the new movie, I Feel Pretty, alongside Amy Schumer. Uh, she is super excited about that opportunity. She opened up about the new gig at last night's launch. Watch. Amy Schumer's I Feel Pretty is a movie coming up, and then also I'm sure, as you know, it's like all the fashion week, so much traveling. Have you already shot the Amy Schumer movie? 
Yes. You're, you're done? Yeah. What's the biggest takeaway? What was, what was it, the relationship like with her and the, just the whole vibe? She's amazing. Uh, she, Amy Schumer is such a sweet person. She's so kind. I'm excited to see this movie. I can't wait to see the dynamic that those two have on screen. It, it'll be interesting to see, yeah. That, right? Yeah, that whole cast. So uh, keep your eyes peeled for that one. But speaking of mega flicks, we uh, spoke to the breakout star of Marvel's Black Panther, Winston Duke. He revealed how the athletic cast kept up their fitness on set. Watch. Goes without saying, anyone that's seen any clip of this movie, you, Chadwick Boseman, Michael B. Jordan, you guys are all ripped to shreds. You've got, I mean, unbelievable. Is it just like weights are all over the set? Okay, cut, let's go over here and just start going. <laughs> just to make like push, let's do 30 push-ups It all, right it all really just... depends on what you needed. And they created a really great environment where you could ask for what you needed. Okay. So for me, I was working out a lot, so we were doing uh, fight choreo stuff. Yep. A good amount of time. And then I would go home at the end of the day and do a training session. Or if I had a really early call for 4 a.m., I'd have my trainer come and train me maybe at 2.30 in the morning. Okay. To then go in on set. Um, and then also while you're on set before shooting, they had weights. They did have weights. Yeah. So like between takes, you might just like do some curls and some things. Keep it pumped. Just keep it pumped and then go out day, there. Day you know. in the life for me here. Yeah. Every day. <laughs> Every day. Just, I gotta pull this suit out. I yeah, well, I could watch those videos on repeat. So. <laughs> and with Duke man. and the cast of Black Panther put in the hard work to bring the movie to life. Look, it totally paid off. Yeah, it did. And for Duke, it was a full circle moment in many ways for him, working with his longtime friend, Oscar winner, Lupita Nyong'o. Yeah, they met back at drama school at That's Yale, so which cool. is, is really cool. Winston opens up to me about how Lupita helped him prep for Black Panther, which, by the way, is his first big screen role. Watch this. It was just great to really get to work with someone I admired and that I had a close relationship with right. who also served to this is your first movie, this is how you do this thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Did this Lupita is... have like a really good piece of advice that was the most powerful that you'll hold on to? Um, I don't think it's just one thing. It was just like, I think the support, knowing that she was there and knowing that I could ask her like, hey, what's this industry or business thing that I should really think about? And how, like what does this, stage mean for me and she always gave great advice you know what i mean so it's just wonderful to have that kind of support system show me my respect and bow down you get to decide what kind of king you are going to be in another generation so kids can kind of grow up not feeling like they need to be part of a first in this way that there aren't going to be that those kind of ceilings for them. They're not going to be wishing to see themselves represented on TV. It's going to be a Black Panther, and hopefully this film creates avenues for other stories like this with people of color, not just black people, but people of color. You know, their stories can be invested in, you know, and be celebrated. And First movie role, Black Panther. I'm so excited for him. And then he's going to also be in the next Avengers movie, Infinity War. We're going to see a lot of him. For a second. I mean, it's just like <laughs> starting out right at the top. How yeah. incredible and, and well-deserved. He is such a great guy. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, stay with us. More to come. We are meeting the woman who is turning terminally ill children's filmmaking dreams into a reality. Such an ama amazing organization. Plus, Patricia Clarkson is opening up about the equal pay on her movie, The Party, and how that completely changed the tone of the set. Don't miss it. It was my first music video with um, Sweetie High in Warner, and it was so much fun. We got this old school, like, teal bus, and, like, at the top it said, hashtag keep it lit. <laughs> and um, one fun fact is it broke down. It actually really? old it was. But the bus was kind of like my co-star. Yeah. Okay, I want to know, how did the bus break down? And then were you freaking out? It's, I mean, <laughs> just, it's just, it just it stopped was, running? It was just point? so old, and, like, we were driving, <laughs> and then we just pulled over and stopped, and, like, this happened. <laughs> yeah. She is so adorable. Tegan Marie is taking the country music world by storm. The 14-year-old already has over 2 million views on her first music video for her song, Keep It Lit. The vocal powerhouse has been getting advice from people throughout the industry, but I don't know which artist she looks up to the most. I love Kelsey Ballerini. She is, like, my sister. I've performed with her a couple times, so I just look up to her. And I think, like, all, all the country artists, um, just because they're older than me, 
then and they know like how to do all these things so I'm just like <laughs> looking up at like all their performances and I watch them and how they perform so yeah so you two have performed together you and Kelsey yes. do you guys keep in touch do you like you know once we see each other we're like oh my gosh hey girl but like yeah we'll, like we'll comment on each other's Instagram posts and all that mm -hmm. stuff so yeah Well guys, The Party, which has a star-studded cast, including the wonderful Patricia Clarkson, hits theaters Friday. The black and white film has been described as a comedy wrapped in a tragedy, and it follows the events that unfold after one character wins a political election. Now, one of the most noteworthy pieces of news surrounding this film is that the entire cast was paid the exact same amount. This was a true ensemble, it was a true collection, uh, a collective, and we had to, it, it, everyone was equal across the board, dressing rooms, drivers, uh, uh, you know, I think we even had to eat the same food. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it, egalitarianism goes a long way when you are, uh, when people come together and truly feel that everyone, everyone is special and, and yet no one is. It, it, it changes the tone of, 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 of a set. Yeah, Clarkson has hit a real stride in her career, but here's what she had to say about finding work in her 50s and her advice to younger actresses looking to negotiate contracts. I always thought I was lucky when I got a job. I don't know many men who say, wow, I'm still working my 50s, I'm lucky. As women, the more we work, the more we, we tend to feel that it's, you know, it's survived, that we've survived. And men feel it's given. And it's not like, oh, wow, wow. I can't tell you how many times a day people come up to me on the street, you know, strangers. Oh my God, I love you, Patty. And you're working so much. Oh, my God, how, how wild is that? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but I think these young actresses, I think it's going to, it takes a little time, but... I think you have to remember if you get the job, you got the job and walk in and negotiate and try to be as strong as possible, but you also want to be careful not to lose a job at the very beginning over money. Yeah. You can always make money, you can't always make a career. Yeah, well, really good advice there from Patricia Clarkson, and nice to hear from her. All right, the nonprofit Make a Film Foundation is turning children's movie making dreams into a reality one story at a time. Founder Tamika Lamison has made it her mission to give terminally ill children the chance to create memorable short films and documentaries alongside the biggest names in Hollywood, giving them a memory in a movie that they'll never forget. Well, joining me now live via Skype is founder Tamika Lamison. How are you, Tamika? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for joining us. I absolutely love your organization. I think it's so incredible. Now, I know you originally moved to Hollywood to start your own career in filmmaking. So tell me, how did you turn your passion into Make a Film Foundation? So it actually started with kind of a real big disappointment because I sold a script for six figures. It was uh, a script that was dear to my heart that I wanted to direct and produce and um, this company bought it for six figures then it was my dream project I could do everything and then I found out that the check was bad and oh, um, no. it totally I know it totally <laughs> devastated me I was like no I had already spent that money in my head <laughs> my life had changed already and then um, I thought uh, you know what I don't want to spend all my time just going after you know getting my movie made or selling my script. I knew there had to be more to life than that. So I started to mentor and teach kids filmmaking and I really fell in love with it. And then a friend asked me, if you could do anything, anything in the world, what would you do? Because that's what you should be doing. And I said, well, aside from filmmaking, I would probably grant wishes to those kids in the Make-A-Wish Foundation because I've always been inspired by that organization. And so I thought, why not combine these two passions and turn it into one big organization where I could fulfill my filmmaking dreams and also have these this unique population of children fulfill their their dream as well. All, yeah, yeah. Yes. That, no, that's incredible <laughs> that you took this disappointment and then turn it into such an amazing thing. Now, you've gotten such A-list directors and movie stars to mentor these children. Johnny Depp, Kerry Washington, <laughs> just to name a few. How have you been able to get them to be a part of this and what was their reaction? Well, uh, a lot of times, because I'm a filmmaker, an independent filmmaker myself, um, I use personal connections, or uh, we also just go the traditional route. Like I have a great casting director, Adele Jones and Adele Renee, and so we basically um, just reach out to their managers or their agents, 
And because of the cause and because um, Make a Film Foundation has such a great history um, and people always talk about how they uh, have had such an amazing time on set and how uh, they're, they're literally transformed by the experience, not just the children, um, but the people on set are transformed by the experience. So um, because everybody's volunteering, so it's literally like the favorite nation. It's like the, the production assistant is getting as much as the A-list star. And so... Um, you know, and sometimes it's it's harder to get like a, a, a sound guy or a grip to work for free than it is to get an A-listener oh, yeah. to work for free. <laughs> but um, yeah, but everyone, it's like a win-win situation. You get to actually do what you love and do it in an altruistic way where you're giving back. So everyone is um, always completely transformed by the experience. Well, it must be really cool for the kids to work with these actors that they watch in the movies. Make a film works with yeah. terminally ill children, which I can imagine can be very heartbreaking at times. But how have you seen your nonprofit change these children's lives? Well, it, it is heartbreaking, but I found it to be a bit bittersweet as well because um, when you see uh, the way that these kids light up when they find out that they are going to be able to tell their story, whatever story they want to tell. It doesn't necessarily have to be filtered through their disease. Sometimes it's about that, but sometimes it's just something that they want to share with the world. It's absolutely, like, it, it's like amazing. And um, they, with the stories that come out of them is, it's just unbelievable and, and incredible. So, um, and then when I, what I say is, it's inspiring for me because it's not like uh, they, they, if they pass away, they're still there on the big screen. So mm -hmm. for me, they live forever on the big screen. So it's like their spirit is up there. So even if they pass away onto another realm, for their, for their family and for the people who actually get to see them, they kind of still exist in a whole nother form forever. That's wonderful. And for people that are watching, how can they get involved in your organization and help out? So if you want to get involved, go to makeafilmfoundation.org. Obviously, like us on Facebook and all the social media channels. And um, we, you know, you can donate money, you can volunteer, um, you know, we look for miles, goods and services, things like that. And, um, and we're very happy. You don't have to be a star or in the business in a certain kind of way to volunteer. I mean, we look for grant writers, things like that. So whatever you feel like you can contribute, we'd love to have. That's amazing. Well, Tamika, thank you so much for everything that you're doing and for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's really cool. What a, a really so awesome. creative idea. Yeah, I mean, I've done uh, organizations like Give Kids the World in Florida where you're, you're doing this, you're working with terminally ill children and it's very heartbreaking, but it, it also you're giving them, she's giving them this film yeah. that they can kind of live on, which I think is so incredible. The experience itself kind of, it, it, it sort of brings up their life mm -hmm. and, and gives them a moment to look at and look back on and And, and all the kids that, so. are so happy, yeah. which is the best part of it. Really cool. All right, let's check in on our question of the day one last time. We want to know who your favorite superhero is. Obviously, we're talking about Black Panther and all of that. So in, in light of that superhero, Lauren says, got to say Wonder Woman, hashtag girl yeah, power. girl power. Who's Did you your, say yours? I said Wonder Woman. I, I, for me, growing up, it was always Superman. Okay. And it was the Christopher Reeves Superman, like that version. Basic, but okay. <laughs> Basic. <laughs> no, it's the great. Superman, excuse me. I like how you're looking around for other people's reactions and, and no one. <laughs> no? <laughs> they don't agree Spidey? with you. They agree with me. Okay. All right, you guys, we'll be asking you a new question of the day tomorrow on People Now, so come back at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Coming up tomorrow, we're talking to the 17-year-old snowboarder who snagged the USA's first gold in the Winter Games, Red Gerard. We cannot wait to hear about his whirlwind of a win and, and how his life has changed in, in this past few days. Yeah. Plus, we've got a few sharks in the house. Shark Tank investors are going to be here. We're uh, getting the news on Robert Herjavec's twin babies on the way. Yes. And maybe I'm going to pitch him an idea or maybe, something. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's see. All right. Thanks for watching. For now, we leave you with one last thing from the Bachelor Winter Games sports commentator, Hannah Storm. Enjoy. Bye, guys. Hi, I'm Hannah Storm, and this is One Last Thing. The last time I was embarrassed on TV was actually doing the Bachelor Winter Games. Chris Harrison and I were at a desk and he always asked me my predictions, which I did, but I am not realizing that all the guys could hear me clearly. So they all stood up and turned to us and were like, what, you didn't pick me, we heard that. So it was very funny and um, it was sort of embarrassing. <laughs> The last Bachelor moment that made me laugh so hard, I cried, was one of the competitors going downhill, falling and sliding on their butt the entire way.
and not even hitting the finish gate. My last bachelor crush was Ben Higgins, because usually I crush on people who are nice, and I met Ben at the Rose Parade. He was on the float. Uh, we were hanging out. My family was there. He was so nice to everybody. So I'm definitely going to pick him as my last bachelor crush. I mean, who wouldn't, right? It's Ben.